Tony, great to be back at Mills CNC. Uh, today we're specifically talking about turnkey. Now this is a, a word we hear a lot, often loosely used. Uh, what does it mean from your perspective and Mills CNC's? Well, I suppose where Mills differ a little bit is we actually have project engineers and application engineers, which are different. So the project engineers are there to support the business manager. A lot of our customers now want fully engineered solutions delivered to their site with parts running as soon as they land. So, so generally what we do here with the turnkey center is that we obviously fully detail quotations up front with times, uh, deliveries, etc. Uh, and then our project engineers will then hand over to our application engineers. They're actually set up, get factory acceptance at Mills here, and then site acceptance at our customer's site. Now this is a, a big part of Mills CNC's business these days. Is that as a result of the success you've had with it, or just the market's demand for it? No, I think Mills has been very successful over the years offering fully turnkey solutions without a doubt. Um, but also I think the skill levels in the market now, certainly some of our larger companies want fully delivered solutions. So really it's both. And, and does this apply to all, all types of companies? I know you do work with some very large establishments and blue chip businesses, but also the SMEs as well. Does it work for both? Well, it does work for both. Uh, yes, of course it does. Just by its very nature, it does tend to be the larger businesses that invest in turnkeys because they're generally production engineers, maybe haven't got the time. Um, but also we're seeing some of the smaller companies now, they realise they've got to invest in automation to, be, to remain competitive. So those companies now maybe haven't got those automation skills, so they want us to deliver that project. And this TW2600, uh, is, is this just one of the models within the range? Yes, it is. There's two actual frame sizes within the range. The 2100, which is a 6-inch chucker, and then the 2600, which is an 8-stroke, 10-inch chucker. You don't have to have the gantry. Both models are available with mill drill or just purely two axis. And then the gantry loader is configurable depending on your requirements. And uh, you took this project on. The customer came to you with a part, and you've delivered everything that we've spoken about so far. You've given them uh, the solution from start to finish. Correct, the blank has already been robot loaded into uh, one of our GT2600 machines. Uh, that's already been delivered to the customer. That blank is now loaded onto the T into the TW uh, and then onto the second operation then which loads onto a mandrel to complete the part. I'm interested as well in the thought process of the applications guys or the projects guys with this type of machine. Why would they select a model like this? What are the advantages of having this type of or this particular TW machine? Well, I suppose one advantage is it's all built into one footprint. It's automated. This gantry loader runs at 150 meters a minute. You're loading one side while you're cutting the other side. So from that point of view, you know, there's a lot of productivity gains to be had. Um, so it's a one machine solution, gantry. We all know now that customers want to run unmanned. And uh, so the customer can get literally eight hours of production out of this machine before it needs to reload the stocker. And this particular model, uh, Tony, why was this selected then by your team for the customer? What were the advantages to this machine? Well, it's billet loaded to start off with. It's not a bar machine, it's a billet machine. So it's billet loaded, it's automated, customer needed unmanned production. Uh, this is just part of a larger cell. So unmanned production. So the raw billets go into the left-hand side of the gantry. In this particular instance, it doesn't have to be that way. Into the stocker, loads into op 10. It's a two up job, completed component then goes onto the output conveyor, which then is picked off the output conveyor um, by the operator and loads onto the next process in the line. Now, you, there is also a, a, every 50 parts, there's a, um, it measures one of them, is that correct? Well, there's an inspection chute on the machine, so you can program it, so in this instance, yes, it's every 50 parts, the operator can pick it off this separate inspection chute, uh, mic the part, inspect the part, and then make any, make any alterations to the offsets if required. Uh, two final questions for you, the first of which would be, how much involvement has your customer had to have had uh, throughout this project? Well, in the early days, obviously, it would have been very close because we worked together with our customer to, to offer the optimum solution for their requirements. Uh, from the point of order then, customer backs away until we have a solution that's producing the parts to all the relevant parameters, then they come to Mills, for factory acceptance prior to decommissioning and then site acceptance and a full pass off on their site. And the final question, why do you think then you would have won this order? Uh, technical capabilities, um, relationship with the customer, 
having the ability to be able to offer a full turnkey, which a lot of our competitors can't. You know, we have the turnkey centre, this is what it's for. Our engineers can get on and work in an enclosed environment and, uh, and be able to deliver. And, and obviously, a lot, this is actually, this work is sensitive, so it has to be separate from maybe other parts of our business as well, and, and we have the ability to be able to do that.